Have you ever wondered what happens to your recycling after it gets collected? This is just the start of the journey. All recycling collected from households across the Braintree district is brought here, to the Materials Recycling Facility at Great Blakenham in Suffolk, where it's sorted into different material types, using a series of automated processes as well as some hand sorting. Collection vehicles empty your recycling onto the tipping hall floor. Some complete loads might be rejected at this point if the levels of contamination are too high. That's why it's important to put the right things in your recycling sacks, making sure it's clean and dry. The delivered recycling is shoveled into piles, ready to be fed onto the conveyor belts. The facility processes about 17 tonnes per hour, or around 285 tonnes a day. Over a year, this adds up to around 75,000 tonnes, or 14,000 full collection trucks, and weighs the same as 53,000 average family cars. In the first sorting cabin, known as the pre-sort, pickers remove black bags, anything which causes concern for health and safety, and items that could damage machinery, such as wire or metal objects. Larger pieces of cardboard are also removed for recycling at this point, to prevent blockages on the conveyor belts further down the line. Recyclable items removed here go down chutes for further sorting. Non-recyclable items are sent down another route ready for disposal. The material is now fed into a large ballistic separator, which sorts material by shape. Walking motion plates, moving in opposite directions, take light, two-dimensional materials over the top onto the paper line in the next picking cabin, while heavier three-dimensional items bounce over the sides. From here, the material is carried into a large trommel, the Dutch word for drum, which spins the recycling to separate materials by size. Different sized holes are used to separate different sized material, such as cans and bottles, or paper and card. Items under 5 cm fall through the holes as they're too small to be recycled. To prevent bottle tops from being lost in the process, wash and squash plastic bottles and put the lids back on before recycling. A second ballistic separator filters out mixed plastics and metals. In the control room, the eyes and ears of the facility, a series of monitors, sensors and alarms allow staff to control the flow of materials, constantly monitoring to show any blockages or issues with machinery and conveyor belts. More than 100 conveyor belts carry the material to various areas of the facility. The recycling has now been sorted into different types, with each material going along a different conveyor. Now, the picking staff remove any items that don't belong by hand. They're placed in chutes or bins for redirection and recycling. All items for recycling should be empty, clean and dry, as food and drink residue can spread and spoil other good material, which is a waste of good recycling. Optical sorters use high-tech cameras, which photograph and measure the density of the material to separate different types of plastics with blasts of air. They can tell the difference between clear plastic bottles, milk bottles and coloured plastics, including food trays. These are separated and collected, ready to be prepared for onward recycling. Two powerful magnets spin in opposite directions at 20,000 revolutions per minute to create a negative charge, called an eddy current. This repels aluminium from the conveyor belt and directs it down a chute into a storage bunker below, ready for bailing. Additional magnets attract steel cans and other magnetic metals, which are directed into another storage bunker. At the end of the process, we're left with rejected items that are either too small to be recycled and not accepted for recycling, or other material that's been spoiled by dirty items. These non-recyclable materials are sent for disposal, and therefore these resources will be lost forever. This double handling of material in addition to any wasted loads at the start of the process, increases costs to the taxpayer, which is why it's so important to recycle correctly. In the final stages, the separated recycling is removed from the storage bunkers and fed into the baler. Each material is crushed into large cubes, wrapped in high tensile steel wire to keep the bales tidy, and then moved into the storage yard. Paper and card are kept under cover, to prevent the bales from getting wet and protect the quality of the material. 
From here, the bales are collected by recycling companies to be cleaned and processed in preparation for manufacturing into new products. Where possible, materials are sent for processing in the UK. Some materials are sent to Europe and overseas, depending on global market demands. To find out more about what can and can't go in your recycling sack, visit braintree.gov.uk.